Now these bees are specifically raised to be put in greenhouses. They're domesticated bumblebees. They're not like the wild bees you would see out in your fields or the woods. Here is their little door where they go back in, and this is where they come back out. So I can move the door to different positions to allow them to only come in instead of coming out. That way, if I need to move the box to a different greenhouse, I can do so. Now I'm guessing there are several hundred bees that arrive in this box. And let's take a closer look inside the box so you can see how they live in here. All right, I shut the door so none are gonna be coming in and out because when I disturb the box, they really start buzzing around. I don't wanna get stung. I've only been stung once or twice <clears throat> in the last 15 years, so they're very docile bees. Well, there's a couple flying around me right now. They're probably wanting in. I'll take the entire box out real quick here for you. You can take a close look. You can see them flying everywhere in there. Now on the bottom of this box, there is a, like a jelly bag of some sort. And there's a little cap there. I removed the little plastic cap that comes on that. And it goes up inside. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna put this back. There's bees wanting to uh, get back in, I think. All right. Yeah. Okay, let's see if any come out here. All right, open the door back up. There's one coming out. Hopefully it's not a soldier bee ready to come and attack me. Ah, he's mad. Now the bag of liquid in the bottom of the box is a supplement to the bees to help them uh, survive because I imagine they can't survive on pollen alone. They need that water, sweet water, nectar, whatever it is. Um, it tastes like sugar water. That will be a supplement to the pollen to uh, help them survive the six to eight weeks that they are effective in the greenhouse. Let's walk around and see if we can find a bee in action. See how he lands on the flower? He bites it and walks all around on it, vibrating it. And that's how he does his thing. Spends quite a bit of time on there. The reason I have the bumblebee box propped up on a cinder block in a small tub of water is to keep the ants from climbing inside the box to get to the sweet nectar bag that's on the bottom. Um, they can cause a lot of damage to the bees, so this is the easiest way to keep them out. And this bee Acts like he's lost. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's trying to enter the wrong place. Here's a bee getting ready to exit. That's probably a soldier bee ready to attack me if I get too close. But for some reason, they entered through the exit. That is not normal. I don't know why he's doing that. He's supposed to go in on the left. Burr. How can this be May? It feels like March 1st out here. It is freezing. I think today's high was 44 degrees. And with these temperatures in the mid to upper 30s at night and non-stop misty, miserable rain, I think we've gotten three inches in the last week. I don't know how our sweet corn's ever gonna grow. I'm really worried that our early sweet corn is rotting in the field and if that stuff does not emerge and create a harvestable crop for us, we're gonna be in big trouble. We're gonna miss a huge window of opportunity for early sweet corn sales in early to mid-July. And if we have to wait for our full season sweet corn varieties that we'll be starting to plant next week, hopefully, hopefully I can get out in the field and plant them next week. We need some warm, sunny, dry weather. If we have to wait on those to start selling our sweet corn, that's gonna be third the fourth week of july and that is just going to be devastating for our operation this year so 
uh, let's go down and check out the sweet corn. I'm really curious to see how it looks. A week ago, it had about a half inch sprout, or not, uh, a root on it, so a tap root. Um, let's dig some up and take a look at it and see if it's still alive. I sure hope it is. I cannot believe it. The sweet corn is up. I can almost row it. You probably won't be able to see it through the camera, but I'm walking down through here and it's sporadic. It's not every kernel, but there is some of this corn. It's up out of the ground an inch. Incredible. I am in disbelief. I mean, I'm sure it hasn't been growing for the last week, but maybe it popped up before all this cold, wet, rainy weather came in. Wow. Okay, I'm going to show you some of this. You won't believe this. 43 degrees and 36 at night, and my sweet corn is growing. How is that possible? All right, I'm going to take you down here real close. Look at that. He's up an inch. There's the next one. And the next one. I know you're not gonna be able to see that down through there, but I can row it. I can see corn up 30 feet away from me. Uh, I mean, I think there's a lot that has not come up yet. It's probably right under the surface of the soil. But I think a uh, couple warm days next week and man, it might be all right. I am freezing, I'm going inside. This is where we're ending today's video, folks. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Don't forget to give it one of these if you enjoyed the video and consider subscribing if you want to follow us along during the farming season. We will see you again real soon in the next farming video.